So the 12 spies have completed their mission of checking out the promised land, and unfortunately 10 of them deliver a terrible report that convinces their fellow Jews that they don't have a chance if they try to enter the land. At one point they explain that the inhabitants of the land are giants. We felt like grasshoppers in their eyes, and in their eyes they viewed us as grasshoppers. The commentators point out that that seems extra. Just say we felt like grasshoppers. Why do you also have to tell us what they thought about us? The explanation is that both ends of that phrase show a lack of faith in God. By pointing out that they felt like grasshoppers, that was a terrible approach. They shouldn't have felt that way about themselves. That shouldn't have been their self-image. They should have realized they're the chosen people. They were just taken out of Egypt by God himself with signs and wonders and miracles. God had vanquished the mighty Egyptian army. They should have been saying, you know, those people who live there in the promised land that God promised to us, they're pretty big, but they don't realize. When it comes time to choose up sides, we get the first pick and we're gonna choose God so they have no chance. And on the other side, by pointing out that they had overheard the giants talking about them as if they were grasshoppers, who are those people that look like bugs? They were intimating, insinuating to their fellow Jews that God's not on our side this time. He could have made a miracle. He could have made us look bigger and stronger, more muscular in the eyes of those giants, but he didn't do that, so he doesn't have our back. And further, the commentators explain that they were showing by adding that extra phrase about what the giants felt about them, that they had a very unhealthy preoccupation with what other people think. And we all have that problem. All of us out there, me and each of you, from the cockiest, overconfident viewers who probably think this video is about them, to paraphrase a certain old song, all the way over to the wallflowers who are convinced that nobody ever notices them, but who are still worried about what if someone does? What will they think? We're so often held back by that fear. There are people who aren't observant, but they're toying with the idea of adding some Jewish ritual to their diet. Maybe kosher food, maybe lighting candles Friday night or a Friday night dinner, but they're worried. What are my friends gonna think? What's my family gonna think? I might look like a religious fanatic who flipped out. And there are people who are observant who are worried about the same thing. Maybe they're asked or questioned about why aren't you careful about a certain area of Jewish law, like Lush and Hara, not saying negative things about other people? And the response is, hey, wait a minute. I do what I do, but nothing more. I'm not a holy roller. I'm not a religious fanatic. I've worked very hard on my carefully crafted image in the eyes of others. Maybe one of the hidden benefits of the quarantine that we've been in is that we've spent so much less time with other people that maybe when we get out, we'll be less worried about what other people think. We spend so much time looking in the mirror, making sure that our clothes are just so, and that our hair looks perfect. Maybe instead we can walk up to the mirror like the Fonz, take one look at ourselves and then put away our comb and say, you know what, I look pretty good. And I don't care what other people think. I'm gonna do the right thing, the thing that I know is right, without worrying about the cat calls or whatever else other people are gonna think or say. This hair was perfect.